This is my very expensive six-figure piece of paper, also known as my doctoral degree. What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So I've said many times on this channel that getting a doctorate or a professional eight year level degree, much of the time is not going to be worth it. A lot of the time it's not going to be a good investment of your time or your money. The reason for this is because the student loans that you take out when you go for a graduate level degree, which is a master's or a doctoral level degree, are much worse than the ones that you take out when you go for a bachelor's degree. It's not uncommon at all to see people taking out well over $50,000 a year in what are known as grad plus loans. And the average student loan balance taken out for people who go for doctorates is over $100,000 a year. But it's not uncommon at all to see people who go to graduate school come out with multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. And if you don't believe me, just go watch a few episodes of the Dave Ramsey show. And many people end up going to graduate school just simply because they can't find a job with the four-year bachelor's level degree that they got and so why not? And this is an out of the frying pan and into the fryer situation where they get themselves in even more trouble than they were in before. And a lot of the time it doesn't even increase their chances of getting a job in that field any more than they had with just a bachelor's level degree. But with that being said, from a personal finance perspective, going to graduate school can be a good investment as long as you plan it out. And I've gone all the way through the entire system from undergraduate to the highest level, you know, a doctoral level degree. And I also have quite a few friends that did the same. So I know what to look for here and by the end of the video you will as well. So in this video we're going to go over some of the best doctoral level degrees and we're going to jump in right after you hit the like button. I'll wait for it. Thank you. Number 10 on the list is going to be architect. So these are the people that of course design buildings and the debt to income ratio is going to be about 2.25 to one. Now when it comes to debt to income ratio, you generally want to try to stay under two to one, but this isn't a hard rule just because of the fact that the more money you make, the higher your debt to income ratio can be. And that's because of the fact that you just simply have more disposable income. Also keep in mind that the debt to income ratio numbers that I found here were the most accurate that I could find. There's there's not a lot of really good numbers out there in my opinion. And I do believe these numbers are a little bit higher so they make it look a little bit worse than it actually is. Now architects are gonna make around $80,000 a year. There's 133,000 jobs available and it's growing at 8% which is much faster than average. Additionally, these are the statistics for a bachelor level degree. And if you get a doctorate, you'll likely make about 25%, maybe 26% more than what it shows there. So it'll probably be over six figures. So this one isn't too bad, but it's also not that great rate either. Number nine on the list is going to be physical therapist. And what they do is they help ill or injured people improve their movement or their pain so they can have a more normal life. Now they do have a 2.5 to one debt to income ratio, which is on the higher side. They do make around $89,000 a year. There's 247,000 jobs out there and it's growing at a fantastic 22% average. This one also has really high job satisfaction. I mean, probably one of the highest out of any career in the entire world. For instance, on pay scale, it shows about about 89% meaning score. And whenever you look at the job satisfaction, it's generally much higher than your average career. The reason for this is because you get to work with patients uh, from when they're injured, generally all the way until they've made a recovery. And that can be very rewarding seeing them, you know, do that entire process. Whereas a lot of healthcare professions, you know, you help somebody and then you never get to see how much it actually helped them down the line. So even though the salary is a little bit low, the DTI is a little high, I think this one is still a pretty good option. Number eight, on the list is going to be dentist and this one has a 2.5 to 1 debt to income ratio. So dentists are these brave souls that are okay with putting their hands into people's mouths all day long. The debt to income ratio is 2.5 to 1 which is a little on the high side but do keep in mind that dentists have a higher income and so it's a little bit easier for them to pay that off. Dentists make on average about $159,000 a year. There's 155,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7% which is as fast as average. Number seven on the list is going to be a college professor. This is a comment that I get all the time. People are saying, you know, Oh, art history is fine because, you know, you can get a job as a college professor if you get an art history degree. And I get it in very specific circumstances. If you have very specific goals, it can be okay for you to go and get an art history degree if you want to be a college professor. But it's not that simple. First of all, college professors have a 1.8 to 1 debt to income ratio, which is not too bad, but they only make around $79,000 a year on average. There's about 1.3 million jobs available and it's growing at 11%, which is pretty good. But 
but it's very difficult to get into academia. I mean, think about it. You teach hundreds of students every single year, maybe even thousands if you're at certain colleges. How many of those students will be able to become professors themselves and how many job openings are available in the first place? And many people that end up going into academia realize too late that it's very similar to a pyramid scheme. And by that, I mean the only people that make a good amount of money are the ones that are at the very top. So you've got teachers teaching teachers how to teach teachers, how to teach teachers, how to teach, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you don't believe me, go and check out the subreddit r slash grad school, where they talk about all the time how, you know, a lot of them have independently come to the conclusion that academia is a pyramid scheme or a scam. Now, it really does vary depending on which field you're going into. There's certain fields where there's not a lot of jobs outside of that. And so it's super, super competitive to become a professor. Whereas there's other fields where there's a lot of jobs outside of academia. And so in order to become a professor, it's not that hard just because there's not as many people trying to get into it. So make sure you do your research, make sure you look ahead, but I get it. If you're passionate about teaching people, you want to become a professor, this could be a viable option for you. And if you end up getting tenure, that can be really sweet depending on your goals. Number six on the list is going to be a science related PhD. So this would be a PhD degree in something like biology or chemistry. So one thing I want to say about getting a PhD, which is probably the ultimate level of doctorate degree, is it takes on average about 8.2 years and that's after you get your bachelor's. So get your bachelor's and your PhD, that takes 12.2 years or more on average. And that's why the average PhD graduate is around 33 years old. Now the average PhD graduate will also be over $100,000 in debt. And the followers of my channel know that the type of debt you have to take out for graduate school is much worse than the type of debt you take out for undergrad. On top of this, you only earn a few percent more than if you had the same exact degree, but it was a master's instead of a doctorate. Yet you take out almost double the amount of debt and you spend way more time getting a doctorate. And if that wasn't enough, a lot of the time when you get a PhD, you're gonna get worked like 10, 12 hours a day, like seven days a week. The professors and the faculty know that they kind of have your number. They've got a lot of leverage over you. And so they can basically make you do whatever they want because at the end of the day, they're the ones that decide whether you get your doctorate or not, and they're the ones that decide when you get it. So you have to do original research and then present it to a panel of experts where they grill you for like, you know, five hours or something. And if you pass that, then you can go ahead and get your doctorate after you've also done many, many years of schooling. Generally, they will assign you an advisor who is supposed to help you on your original research and help you, you know, ask the types of questions that other PhDs would likely ask. If you have a crappy advisor, you're pretty much screwed. And that's kind of just the luck of the draw. A friend of mine who got her PhD in computer science, for instance, had an advisor who actually stole her original work, posted it on his own website without giving her any credit. This created a super awkward situation where if she didn't say anything, she might get you know accused of plagiarism, but if she did say something, the advisor might not help her or they could even hurt her in getting her PhD. This was a super awkward situation for her. It ended up turning out okay, but it could have easily gone a different way if things didn't work out. And the truth is many people don't even end up finishing their PhD. PhDs. The seven year completion rates for PhDs range from 29% for humanities to 57% for engineering. Now there are a lot of job opportunities out there outside of academia if you get a science related PhD compared to some of the other ones. So it can be worth it depending on your specific goals if you're going for something that specifically requires a PhD. But in my opinion, the science part of STEM is not as good when it comes to personal finance as the other three, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Number five on the list is going to be a lawyer. This is a really interesting one. It's been a very popular degree for decades. Now, lawyers have a debt to income ratio of about 2.8, which is pretty bad. And in my opinion, this used to be an incredible degree. It was one of the best careers that you could go for out there. But in recent times, because of overhype and just because a lot of times have changed and things have changed, it's not as good as it used to be. It's getting saturated. There's a lot of law schools out there just pumping out graduates. And in my opinion, it is overrated. Now, lawyers make around $122,000 a year. There are 823,000 of them in the United States, and it's growing at 6%, which is faster than average. Now, the difference with being a lawyer is there is a huge 
disparity in pay between the bottom and the top of lawyers. So, you know, you go into the medical field and you become a nurse, for instance, there's not gonna be a huge disparity of pay in most of the different careers. With lawyers, it is huge. It could range all the way from you getting like a $40,000 job to making like $20 million a year. And a lot of it has to go with where you go to law school and if you're a top level student or not, and you know, who you know, and a lot of other factors like that. So in my opinion, this is a big Big risk and also a big reward type of degree. You really want to do your research and make sure you know exactly what you're going for before you go to a law school. When it comes to being a lawyer, uh, it really matters what specialty you go for. So you want to do your research on which specialties you want to get into. Other specialties, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. I would look at maybe technology related specialties just because of the fact that not a lot of lawyers have skills in technology. So if you're able to combine the skills of being a lawyer with knowing a lot about technology, that can be extremely lucrative. Number four on the list is going to be a technology engineering or mathematics related PhD or TEM. Now, like I said before, you know, everybody talks about how STEM degrees are really good. And for the most part, that's generally speaking true. But in my opinion, when it comes from a personal finance perspective, technology, engineering, and mathematics degrees are going to be better than science ones. And because of the fact that there's so many different, you know, career opportunities out there with a technology, engineering, or mathematics degree, and it's pretty much universally respected, even if you don't go into the field that you originally got your degree in, it's not a horrible idea to also get a doctorate in these types of degrees. Many of them do actually require the technical skills that you would learn getting a PhD, and so it can oftentimes pay off. Additionally, there's a lot of opportunity outside of academia. So if you want to become a professor that teaches technology, engineering, or mathematics, there's probably not going to be as much competition. And there are some positions out there, especially in big companies, that prefer people who have doctoral level degrees. Number three on the list is going to be pharmacists. And pharmacists are legal drug dealers and they're experts on pharmacology. Now, when most people think of a pharmacist, they think of someone who gave them their antibiotics inside of a grocery store store or inside of a local retail pharmacy. But actually there are many, many other pharmacy related jobs within hospitals, clinics, outpatient settings, and all kinds of other examples. Retail pharmacy is just one type of pharmacy job, but it's what most people think about when they think of a pharmacist. Now, pharmacists have a 2.2 debt to income ratio, so that's gonna be a little bit higher than what you would want, but it's not horrible compared to a lot of the other ones on the list. Pharmacists make around $128,000 a year. There's 314,000 jobs available, and it is growing at an awful 0%. And I've talked about this before, but probably don't wanna get into pharmacy unless you really know what you're getting yourself into. Pharmacy was my passion and that's why I got into it, but for a lot of other people, it's probably not going to be a good idea. I think a lot of people go into pharmacy for the wrong reasons, for one, and then it's not exactly what they thought it was going to be. And I hate making generalizations and statements like this, but I'm just gonna do it don't go into retail pharmacy. Just don't do it. Do not go into retail pharmacy. It is so oversaturated because of the pharmacy mill schools that are just pumping out PharmD graduates left and right. Don't go into retail pharmacy at all. If you wanna go into pharmacy and work in a hospital or be a clinical pharmacist, I think that's an amazing career path to try to get into, but retail pharmacy is just not worth it. I hate to say it, and I'll probably make a video about this in the future, but it's just the sad reality of things right now. Now, the two 2.2 debt to income ratio honestly isn't too bad, especially compared to a lot of the other ones on the list. You can pretty easily pay that off as long as you're smart with your money. Now, with a lot of the medical related degrees, everybody knows that they have a ton of demand. I've mentioned this over and over again in my other videos. Medical related degrees have the most demand out of all the degrees, even more than technology or business. However, what has ended up happening because of a bunch of different policies and laws and like a bunch of different stuff that I won't get into is that schools have begun opening and oversupplying medical related degrees. This is exactly what happened with pharmacy. So there was a huge shortage of pharmacists at one point. The government made some changes in how they distribute student loans and how student loans are taken care of. They basically made it to where graduate level degrees are like a blank check for schools to write any amount that they want on. This is why you see schools out there that are charging, you know, $70,000, $80,000 a year sometimes 
to put people through their programs. This is why it's so important with any master's or doctoral level degree that you just go for the cheapest possible school. 99% of the time, it's not going to be worth it to go for the you know, prestigious Ivy League level school or the you know, school that's super good in whatever degree you're going to get it in. It's almost always better for you to just go to the cheapest possible school and you'll be all right if you do that. Number two on the list is going to be dental specialists such as orthodontists, periodontists, and endodontists. Now, a lot of these people are dentists and then they decided to specialize even further and become orthodontists. Dentists. Now they have a two to one debt to income ratio, which really isn't bad at all, especially considering that they make a really good money. They make around the same amount of money as your average medical doctor. And so it's pretty easy for them to pay that off. Now it's hard to find accurate data on graduate level degrees just because of the fact that there's not that many people that graduate and it's not as transparent as we'd like it to be. But depending on the specialty that you go into and where you live, you can definitely make over $300,000 a year as an orthodontist, for instance. The average according to ZipRecruiter is going to be 292,000 a year. And so overall, this one does take quite a bit of time to get into, but it can pay off and it can really be worth it. Number one on the list is going to be medical doctor. I think everybody knows what a medical doctor does. There's tons of shows out there. I think everybody's family has been telling them since they were four years old that they should become a doctor. And I made a whole video about this one where I talked about how, in my opinion, it's a little bit overhyped. But when you compare it to other doctoral level degrees, medical doctor does come out on top. First of all, they have a 1.64 to 1 debt to income ratio. Now, doctors can easily make over $250,000 a year depending on their specialty. The highest paying specialty is going to be a neurosurgeon, which makes over $600,000 a year. The lowest paying specialty is going to be pediatric infectious disease, which makes around $186,000 a year. So if this is the pathway you want to go, it can be really good. There's a lot of things they don't talk about when it comes to becoming a medical doctor. There's a lot of downsides to it. Many people go for medical doctor and for whatever reason, one reason or another, they're not able to make it. Seems like everybody I knew in undergrad when I was taking different chemistry classes wanted to become a doctor and only a few of them out of all those people actually ended up doing it. So check out that video if you want to kind of know my opinion on becoming a medical doctor. It can definitely be worth it for the right person. But overall, if you're a normal person who just wants to, you know, make a decent amount of money and then be able to enjoy the rest of their life, being a medical doctor might not be the best choice for you. Thanks for watching my videos. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching.